cut this out. I want to look. I'm. I want to look smarter. I'm tired of saying cut it out and you don't cut it out. I'm going to start singing something that's trademarked. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. Ah, ah. DJ Vince. Ah. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Bing Dwen Dwen. What? Hi, Frank. And this here is Frank looking all schnazzy. And it, he looks like a uh, he looks like a hard worker. He looks yeah. like a hard worker, but who's not working right now? The material is very like denim ish. This is old news, but it's it's giving me a Carhartt vibe. That working. Did you hear that thing about Carhartt? No. So, <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, this is like I said. This is old news. Probably two weeks old, but we're trying to boycott Carhartt. Oh. Because the Supreme Court came out and said, hey, we can't mandate masks. Okay. We just can't do it. Or vaccines. I don't know. One or the other. Okay. And then, so companies that were fighting the power, if you will, were like, yeah, that's what I thought. You won't see any masks and or mandatory vaccines in our place. Carhartt, the company, if you don't know Carhartt, it, they, it's an apparel, clothing that's made for the working okay. man and woman. Like Dickies. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like you'll you'll get your overcoat to mm-hmm. go on your construction site. Made for the blue collar worker. Mm-hmm. They were like, yeah, we're going to keep the mandate. Okay. And then everyone was, I'm not going to wear your, 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 you for years. I've had your brand on my right. hats and my jackets and my gloves. Saying that I am a proud, hardworking American. And uh, I will refuse to wear... I will burn my car heart. But here's my thing. Okay. <laughs> my thing is... F you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not yeah, doing that anymore. Not on, my, not on my Christian podcast. Not on my watch. But I get confused when people's beliefs spill out and the truth is told. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So what I mean by that is... A lot of people, when they want marijuana to be legalized, they say, but the health benefits, Mm -hmm. it's not even. And then it's like, okay, we'll we'll give you CBD and that's it. And they're like, okay, well, I also want to get high. Right. And with this, it's, you can't tell me to put on a mask. You can't tell me to get a vaccine. And then it's like, well, this company is choosing to. Right. And it's like. Okay, well, I actually just don't like anyone doing it. My company, my choice. My company, my choice. So I, like, I, I, I get confused. Is like, you're gonna. So now you're. So that's what turns it back political. It's like mm-hmm. you're mad because you're saying you're not fighting the same same fight I'm fighting. It's like I thought you weren't fighting to fight. I'm guessing. I, I thought you were fighting for personal liberties. I'm guessing that it's been. You said it was two weeks ago. I'm guessing no one burned their car heart stuff and nobody. Well, I'm sure like a few cuckoos did, and um, then the rest were like. Uh, it's very comfortable and I like the way it looks and affordable and so yeah, but I, don't, I don't know how much it costs. That's my little Thank that's you my for that. little first first Thank you three for that. Rant. I'm Bing Dwen Dwen. Bing you, Dwen Dwen. You should know who Bing Dwen Dwen is because how? how? Because and how. No me how. Because I thought it was Ni how. Ni how, I don't know. I don't speak Chinese. Um so it's Bing Dwen Dwen. The Beijing Olympics. It was Beijing Chinese? Yeah. yeah. 2022 winter olympics to wait really they were just in beijing the summer olympics wasn't it summer olympic and when i say just like 2014 they're really not branching out i don't know all i know is that it started today i thought it was the tokyo olympics what is going on with you i thought that's 20... japan i know i thought 2022 was maybe in tokyo. that was summer all i know is that covid messed everything up but all i know is that this is the 2022 winter olympics yes okay it's in beijing yes um their hours are different than ours believe um, it or not i'm sure they're they're far different so the opening ceremony is friday of course today's thursday but they've happened because we are behind them you know what's interesting about time zones what so every time zone the second number will be the same right like if it's five, if so yeah. right now it's five twenty-two here. Right. It'll be let's just say eleven twenty-two there. But technically, 
That's just what we use for convenience. Oh, okay. You could go minute by minute. Oh, wow. We the the world the, the Earth is in a twenty four hour time zone cycle. Right. So I just find that pretty cool. You're super sophisticated today. I don't know. It's just like sailing over Frank and I's head, my head. It's because I got a haircut. You did. So yeah. I like before I was like blocking off a lot of the. Uh, <laughs> you weren't getting good reception. I, was, I wasn't getting good reception. Bing I'm like Dwayne the opposite Dwayne. of Samson. Bing Dwayne Dwayne is the mascot of the Olympics. I don't even know there was a mascot. Yeah, Olympics. there's always a mascot. Really? I think they're usually like, I don't know, like a cartoon character. You don't even know what it is. But Bing is a panda and its first name means ice and its second name means children. I don't know why it would mean ice children. Ice children. It's um, an ice suit is supposed to look like an astronaut suit. And that way it's talking about um, demonstrates the future and technology. Mm. There's a heart on its left paw, which symbolizes Chinese hospitality. Mm. So I'm being Dwen Dwen because the Olympics have started. It's hard to watch or something. Go look it up. I think you can watch it on Peacock and um, other. Peacock is just coming out of left field and just stealing everyone, isn't it? Right? Yeah. And other they things. They took The Office. They took oh, yeah, other things right. that you're I'm right. like, they're like only available on Peacock. I'm like, what is Peacock? Yeah, proud as a peacock. I guess it's that ding, ding, ding. Well, it's uh, I mean, it's a new streaming service, is what. But it I mean, is. isn't that the NBC peacock? Oh, well, is NBC's? I don't know. Okay. Um, we didn't send people there. USA. We sent athletes, but like we're not there as visitors, commentators. Specta- oh, hmm. I Why? Know. Something. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's just COVID or if it's also we're mad at them. But something is going on that we said we're not sending anybody. So and who made that decision? Like whoever usually broadcasts it. Uh, but isn't like then shouldn't Peacock be like perfect? Nobody come. We'll go and like yeah. I'm surprised a third a, a smaller party isn't capitalizing. Like we sh- you shouldn't actually go over. Is it a national Kirk and Crow, rule? I don't know. And then everyone's forced to watch Kirk and Crow's. Right. Not forced, but you know they tune yeah, in. I don't and know what's like, going on, but the- Snoop Dogg is there. Isn't Snoop Dogg and Kevin Hart? That was in the summer. I don't know. I, I, I feel like I might be seeing old clips, but maybe because the Olympics are started, they're resurfacing. It's really like the opening ceremonies, like I said, are today. So really, it, nothing should have started yet, but things have started. So curling, I think, has started. Before the opening bell? Yeah. Hmm. But it's not a medal ceremony. It's that kind of beginning uh, ceremony. Women's ice hockey. American? American women's ice hockey. Yeah. I believe we won at the last Olympics. So it's highly contested. Did we win or did? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We, but all I know is we won last night. We played Finland and it was a really big game. I don't know if Finland had won before or we had won before. But anyway, the biggest rivalry coming up in women's ice hockey is America against Canada. Oh. It's very hotly contested. So um, that's what you want to look out for. Okay. I'll look out for it. <laughs> all right. That's the Winter Olympics. Look it up and we'll talk about it for the whole entire time that it's on. But... More importantly, the soccer, which we already talked about, which is leading up to the World Cup, they did win. They lost against Canada. Who cares? But we won against Honduras last night. I'm pretty sure I went to a Honduras game. Really? Why? Not a U.S. game. There was uh, something. They, it's called like the Classico, the Americo Classico, mm-hmm. where it's American teams. And by American, I don't mean what us um, United States people believe is American, which is the United States of America. Oh, North but America. North America, South oh, America. Okay. Like it's like, mm-hmm. and so USA wasn't playing. It was over in the Lincoln financial field. Really? And um, it was Honduras versus Uruguay. I believe it. I don't know. Wait, didn't we just, no, San, we beat San Salvador. Yeah. Then Canada so beat San us. San Salvador. San Salvador. Canada beat us. But then we beat Honduras. So we're still in it. It was the coldest it was in Minnesota. Oh. Poor heart Hondurans. The coldest. Soccer game. Soccer game ever held. Like, of course, not the coldest soccer. I've been, Believe me. My brother used to be a goalie. <laughs> I, I've been not to very, up in, very. Not up in Minnesota. I've been Minnesota. to very cold. But whatever it is, like the professional men, U.S. men's national team or whatever. Coldest. Um, You know, when they opened, it was five degrees Fahrenheit. Oof. It went to three degrees Fahrenheit, which is, for people who don't know, 37.4 Celsius. Um, but that can't be right. Yeah, it can. It can? Yeah. I thought 37 degrees Celsius would be. Are you just going to try to do plus 32? 
Because it's more complicated than All that. Right. Don't do Celsius because I don't know it. It was three degrees Fahrenheit. It's negative, yeah, but it'll be negative 37. Okay, it was really Celsius. cold. Walker Zimmerman is captain of the team, which we talked about him before, and he did get a goal. It was 3 0. And um, so I was happy, and then I was sad, and now I'm happy again, and we're still in it. And there's two more games in March, but they're not, they're not, they're TBDs, you know, when and where. And, and who? Yeah, might, they might know who. Yeah, Costa Rica and. Mexico maybe but anyway um so all our sports I feel so sporty sporty spice it. Olympic soccer and um that's it that's it and that's national but people don't care that the Sixers lost last night because they're not from Philadelphia so we'll talk national okay that's fine we always do like something different sometimes it's like we're in a holiday mood yeah. talk about weather, holidays sometimes. weather mood well yeah we had to get out of the weather mood all right. I forgot, since again, we are America, last week, or it was last week or this week? We talk, It was last wasn't week. It wasn't this week. <laughs> it was last week. We talked about, in Canada, they had um, Keep Talking Day. Or- yeah, it was, uh, what was it called? Don't Talk, Keep It Up. No. Keep, keep Talking, Keep Sharing? Keep Talk, Keep Sharing. But what? No, it, it, was, was, Bell. it was Bell. Don't Stop Talking. Yeah. That was the Canadian Day um, talking, mental health awareness, always make people talk. <laughs> Force them to talk. <laughs> like, please it. leave me alone. It's like, no, keep talking. <laughs> Always make people talk. Uh, UK today, which of course the times are different. Once again, let's talk about time zones one more time. It was really kind of the last. They're probably after us. Yeah, it's, it's probably, probably yeah, it's probably over. But it is time to talk day okay. in the UK, and it's again mental health. Always talk, but it's really centered on the workforce the business place business world place of business business world yeah um because yeah you talk about it with your friends and you talk about it with your family but it's it's still kind of taboo in the office and yeah the workspace and, i'm trying to work don't talk to me about your problems right so or it could be like water cooler gossip like he took a mental day because oh. you know and it's like that's perfectly fine that's okay mm-hmm. and he can right so we were going to play a game which is the uh, fortune Thing 500. That little kids do with the fold up the paper yeah. and do the thing. You've decided not to do it. I'm not mad at you I'm because not to do it. my printer printed to the light. I don't even know if you could read it or how bad your eyes are. Because in America, it's don't talk about it day. No, it's not. So, but if you go to time to talk day dot co dot uk, you can get your own little. It had all the downloads for what they're called are conversation starters. Because if you do feel awkward, you do want to talk to Frank. Frank's been acting a little strange. He's been keeping to himself. You don't want to pry, especially English people. I don't want to stereotype them, but it's kind of like privacy. Americans are sort of more open. So it's conversation starters of how you can approach somebody and keep communication open. And I don't know. I like the idea, but if I was a little down in the dumps and I'm at work, just punch him hours away. And someone comes up to me and is like, Pick a number. All right. I don't pick, know if that's... Pick a number. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> you're not helping. Like, don't, why don't you just go to your cubicle, open, no, you open up to, one, learn the, the thing, and then come over and talk to me about it. Maybe that? maybe that is what you do. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, when you go to the water cooler, you do that, and you're like, all right, what are we going to talk to Bill about today? Yeah. I don't know. All I know is that um, I think we're done with openers. All right, guys. More importantly, today is my favorite day of the week. It's Thursday. Ah, it's so great. It was it was a uh, a fast week this week. I think when you get that change of the month, uh, February. I think when there's a change of the month, it it makes a week fast, and I'm gonna explain why. Mm. Right, like Monday is the first day, mm-hmm. but then Tuesday again. What day is it? Today's Thursday. No, the what? Today's the third. The third. Yeah, so then it was like it restarted. All right. Because it was like, well, now it's the first of the month. Wednesday, Thursday. And then it's like out of nowhere, before you even know it, it's a Thursday. Yeah. That makes sense. Time zones. Thursday's the the end of the week. Time zones, you know? just got Friday. But on Thursday, we have a little thing called Walk Through Thursday. Ding. Dong. Um, And yeah, so we'll roll the intro now. All right. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. 
what is up guys it is walk through thursday day 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 a fun little thing we do that we've been doing for years and upon years now mm -hmm. and what we do is we open up the bible the bible's open okay and we pick a verse or a series of verses from the bible a passage if you will and we slow it down we break it down you know what i mean Mm -hmm. you know, uh, we we try to get deeper meaning out of a verse that you might not normally hear yeah and, or that you might hear and, and we just try to get the 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 little little nuggets of wisdom from each word of the bible mm -hmm. without having to two things either read the whole bible or only think about the stories that you already know it's exciting yeah it's like it's like uh it's like a bible study is that what they do in Bible study? I don't know. I've never been. Neither have I. Are we just Bible studying? Is this Bible study Thursday? doesn't no. matter. We try to get a little message from it, a little understanding of it, and you might get something different, and that's okay, but just listening to it and cognitively thinking about it yeah. is powerful, yeah. and it's an active way to learn more about you know the Bible. It's You might be a little get a little passive and just pray every day, but right. hey, let's talk about a Bible verse. And Good. it's a blessing to hear the Bible. So even if you don't feel like thinking, by listening to what you're about to listen to, you've been blessed. Blessed and impressed. <laughs> That's the whole goal around here. But we're going to read this verse. We're going to break it down sentence by sentence, line by line, word by word, letter by letter, syllable by syllable, voice crack by voice crack. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let's get into it. Today, we are reading out of the book of... Two Kings. Two Kings. Not th we That's three... not yours. Not we, <laughs> we three kings, not one king. Two Kings. Kings number two. We haven't read out of that yet. No? No. I, I, I believe you. And so this is from the Old Testament. Okay. Right? Okay. This is from the Old Testament, and it is... I forget exactly where in the Bible it is. Do you have any backstory for what we're reading? Because we're reading Kings, 2 Kings 20, 13 to 19. I do have a backstory. Okay. I didn't know I'd do that first. We, you can do it after. I've lost my paper. Um. Okay, let's do it after. Okay. I'll just get the read. Why, why don't I? Whoa, it's a long one today. We're going to do a, a, a speed walk. I'm the speed walking champion in Pennsylvania, so I will speed walk my way through this. I wish you gave me the spelling phonetically for these names. Hezekiah. Hezekiah received the envoys and showed them all that was in his storehouses. The silver, the gold, the spices, and the fine olive oil. His armory and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah, the prophet, went to King Hezekiah and asked, Why did those men say, and where do they come from? From a distant land, Hezekiah replied, they came from Babylon. The prophet asked, what did they see in your palace? They saw everything in my palace, Hezekiah said. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your predecessors have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you, will be taken away. And they will become eunuchs. eunuchs. Oh, sorry. I knew that word. Listen, I, I just, I just, I just. I know it's spelled weird. I was weird, trying to show off. It. Okay. <laughs> In the palace of the king of Babylon, the word of the Lord you have spoken is good, Hezekiah replied. For he thought, will there not be peace and security in my lifetime? That's a long one. It's not really. Look at all the... Each one was just like it was like reading a screenplay. Like he said, she, he said, then he said, uh, then he said what then actually he said. was said. Yeah, it was just a little conversation. It was just a little teeny tiny story. A little it banter back and forth between Hezekiah and Isaiah. Two Kings 20, 12 to 20? No, 13. Yes. 13 to 20. Um, why do I keep saying that? That's, all of that's wrong. That's not any of the numbers. Two Kings 20, 13 to 19. 13 to 19. Yeah, okay. So 2 Kings 20, now is my time for my background. Now is your time to shine. 2 Kings 20. Um, Hezekiah was Hezekiah. dying. He was dying and he was sick. And he and, and he I, was king? 
Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm just kidding. And so he was I said to him, the Lord spoke to me and you're going to die. Time's up. Yes, because so, Isaiah was a prophet. Isaiah was a prophet and he said, and he was, and the Lord did talk to him and he said, you're going to die. And Hezekiah was like, Man, no, 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 please, no. And he prayed and prayed, uh, can this be changed? Because I don't want to die yet. And, and if you will have mercy on me, Lord. So the Lord... Uh, told Isaiah, okay, I'll give him 15 more years. Yeah. I'll give him 15 more years and I'll spare his life. And he even, besides just um, just um, giving him the extra life, Hezekiah was like, when Isaiah told him that, Hezekiah's like, how do I know that's true? Like, how do I know? Um, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Isaiah said, what do you want him to do to prove that it is the word of the Lord and you will be saved? Hezekiah said, um, you know, the shadow of the, uh, oh my God, sundial. <laughs> Make the sundial go, I think, 10 paces back. 15, I forget, 10 paces, 10 shadows back or something like yeah. this. So not only did the Lord give him the extra 15 years, he also gave him the sign. The shadow moved back, which is yeah. impossible. It's a miracle. It's he sun was, moving. He was so happy. Hezekiah. Okay. Because, okay, so now we come to the envoys who came that they came from Babylon and um, the Babylonian king. So they're coming to sing, see the Hezekiah king. They had heard he was sick. So Were there envoys? I think they're just like messengers. Okay. People who have come. And so, yeah, the king of Babylon sent his people to um, bring him a gift. They're like, oh, he was sick. They get there. He's not sick because he, he 15 had 15 extra years. 15 extra years. He, he'd been cured by God. Yes. Okay. That's the pre story to this. Okay. The prelude. The prelude. They. Are now visiting him this is what hezekiah does he to show the men who came to visit now the kicker is what happens when isaiah questions him what did you do who'd you see and then tells them okay guess what you're gonna lose everything that you had you leave not not even just all the things that you said were treasures but also some of your actual flesh and blood it'll all end up being in, given to babylon and um it's not great news has a isaiah didn't clap for him he didn't pat him on the back he didn't say cool that you did that he said well you know this is what's going to happen now hezekiah doesn't say unfair um i refuse your statement you're so mean he said the word of the lord you have spoken is good but then he also he ends it with will there not be peace and security in my lifetime well yeah so it is an odd story. I like to pick the odd stories. I like to pick the stories that aren't on, you know, tapestries to hang in your house and not fun little one-liners about, um, which are great. It sounds like you're coming out the one-liners. No, they're great, but but there's this is we've this we've, is what you don't always often we've ventured read. a little bit this off is, of the this buffet. This is just as biblical as yes. John one four. Yes, but we just don't read it as much. Yes. Okay. So, what do you want to do? Do you want me to tell you like? I want you to tell me the answer. You want me to tell the, tell what you the answer? What did he do wrong? Okay. So wait, he did something wrong, but it's, he did not, something wrong. it's not exact. It was like when Moses was um, not allowed to go and it's like you had to then be like, okay, well, he struck the rock. Right. And then you're like, well, so he was taking the power instead of giving okay. the power to God. Right. So I'm going to use that same kind of mind frame. Okay. And what I'm thinking is he's like, please let me stay longer. I'm not, I'm not ready to die. God said, okay. You were the king. You'll be able to ha rule your kingdom for 15 more years. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that happens, he's like, all right, boys, come on in. The king ain't going nowhere. Look at all my treasures. Right. I'm so rich. I'm so great. How you doing? Yeah, look at this. I'll, I'll show you all my jewels. Right. That's exactly it. And you might think that it was a punishment. It's not really a punishment because the way life goes time and tides and trends and and powers that be they turn anyway so like regardless if the, god was punishing him you're going to lose your treasures and you're going to you know some of your yeah. family's not going to be with you they're going to be servants of the of babylon it's not necessarily but it is an it's sort of more like a reality yeah right so the reason isaiah, isaiah knew god knew everyone never not everyone but the prophet and the god knew what he had done, he still asked him, like, 
kind of given him a chance to be like, did you see what you did wrong? Yeah. So he, and this here is Hezekiah saying, I showed him all my treasures. I, I showed them everything that was something to be proud of. So the little unwritten thing is. is he didn't talk about the Lord. God just gave you a miracle. He gave you, yeah. he, he gave you 15 he, extra he years. He was valuing the treasure. Right. And he wasn't, you know, like King David who would always put God first. Right. And it was like, well, this is the only treasure. This, this, you know, the tabernacle, you know, the Ark of the Covenant. That's what I'm celebrating. That's what I'm showing everyone. Right. Praying it through the streets. Right. This guy was like, just had a miracle happen. He obviously is a follower of God, but then he is bragging about, you know, those, let those who boast, you know, boast in this. Right. right. It's a perfect answer for that Bible verse. Um, right. Because when he was going to die, he, he didn't he didn't message the king of Babylon and say, can you save me? Yeah. Right. To pleading with God, you know, to save me. But then once he is saved, turns around and doesn't mention it to these people, doesn't spread the word of God, doesn't yeah. um, doesn't even count it among one of his one of his treasures, at least. Yeah. Like, what did you show him? And it's like. Number one, I showed him my my miracle, my blessing, yeah. how important that is. My church. This is the tab. This is the altar I built. It was like, you know, um, my armory, yeah. which is war things, you know, helmets and knives and. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like that story of um, you know, it's like a motivational thing, and it's like the wise man brought the. He said, "Meet me at five a.m. by the ocean," and then he goes to the ocean and he puts his head underneath, and he holds it there. No. And then he's like, when he lets him up, it was like, what What was the most thing you wanted when you were down there? Oh, it was like, I wanted to breathe. Right. And then it was like, we got to need, you want to breathe as much as, you, if you want to breathe as bad as you want to succeed, then you'll be successful. That's the motivational thing. But okay. it, it, I'm comparing it in the sense of like, when his head was underwater, when he was dying, all he wanted was life. And, right. and he asked God for it and God gave him it. And then. Once his head was out of the water, there wasn't that still that what same appreciation. Right. It, it was back to your earthly life. Yeah. You know? Right. It'd be like, yeah, it'd be like uh, if you came out of the ocean, actually, you know, water, and then you start smoking cigarettes, and it's like, right. You so you really don't care about breathing that much, do right. you? You care more about other things. Like you, you realize how valuable that breath is. Right. But then you forgot as soon as you had it. Yeah. So what do you think about um, Hezekiah's response to I, to Isaiah? I think it's uh, it's interesting. You know, I mean, like, I think it shows, you know, the fact that he did you know, respect God and, and mm-hmm. hear God's word. And I think it's all he understood. You know, like it was God, like you said, God wasn't smiting him down of I will. You're, you're dead. You're a dead man. Right. I take it, back the 15 years yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, it was, they, those were all extras being given to him and then he didn't appreciate it. I mean, it's kind of like when David lost his firstborn child. Obviously, he was very upset, but it was like he knew he messed up. He knew mm-hmm. that he had his boy killed. Right. And in this, it's like, it, 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 he didn't, I think, I think seeing him see that, is also because a lot of people that aren't religious like to paint the Old Testament as God was awful. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was just killing Vengeful, people and stuff. And, yeah. And, and I think when we read this, you have to understand, like, especially who's talking and who's saying what. And he's like, "Well, God is good and God is right." Like, like you said, it was God was stepping in and saying, "I'll give you another fifteen years." Mm-hmm. And it's like, then you you do something wrong. He's he's not going against you. He's just saying, "Okay, well, this is what's going to happen." Like, right. Yeah. But um, and then so about the last so for he th- he thought he didn't say, it. will there not right. be peace and security in my lifetime? I think that's just not being mad at God, being mad at himself. Yeah, like you know, how we all get mad at ourselves, like uh, you know, here I am again, like yeah. not remembering. But I mean, just to finish up, um, I like the word you know, peace there because it, uh, I think it does like say about himself and. He, he's mad at himself, but not like, I'm such a screw up. It's like, I think what he was looking for was the wrong thing. And, and it was peace. Wasn't showing everyone his, his jewels. Like he was like, why can't I just sit back 
right. and be in peace right. and security with God. God is his security right. in my lifetime. Why am I doing more that's causing me trouble? Yeah. And the la- the very last, there's it goes to 21. So mm-hmm. there are two more lines. I just didn't put them in for the initial reading. And it just is one, you know, in, in the Bible when they finish up and they go, and he lived this many yes. years and everything went fine. And that's how it does end up for him. It's he did good things for his town and he, and. And oh, so he didn't lo- lose the 15 years? No. Oh. No, no, no. And then he, um, it, it says Hezekiah rested with his ancestors. He'll eventually die. And, and um, he's an important part of the line and everything. So just it's like f- a learning. And just to finish up, right? Like, so what did he lose? All of the earthly things that he was boasting about. He, right. he didn't lose, you, like, you, like, you, like I said, you're getting smote down. No. Your children are going to die. He lost what he valued, which was the material. Right. This, and not even in his lifetime. Right. It's, Okay, well, guess what? This pal, what, what God said is, this palace is temporary. It's, it's not going to be in your lineage. Right. This, uh, all your jewels is going to, and even just like, oh well, he's turning people into eunuchs. What he's saying is, the bloodline is not going to be the bloodline of kings. Right. Like servants, it, yeah. It, it mm-hmm. stops with you. And will there be any peace and security in his lifetime? Yes, actually, maybe why he was so the or the word the Lord spoken is good is because having that be said. Just gave him peace and security. He's no longer worried about the material. Right. He's happy with his life. It's like, you're not worried about, let me hoard my jewels. Right. Let me make sure I have four sons. It's you, all he's worried about now is being a good king and following the Lord. Right. We walked through it. That's walk through Thursday. Come back tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Friday. Donate some Dr. Seuss books because we are. <laughs> $10 <laughs> a piece. $10 a piece. <laughs> we'll be back. Um, go out and. Give all the glory to God. Peace.